So in this talk, we're going to define left cosets. Unfortunately, the, there's a couple of facts about left cosets which I cannot prove. I don't want to prove right away. Just want to give the definition, but those facts really help you understand it. So right now, it'll be a little fuzzy. So there's a group G and a subgroup H. A left coset of H in G, it's basically something like you take H and then you multiply it on the left by some element of G. Okay, that's the idea. So you, you remember what, what this notation means? X times H. What does that mean? X times H. Yeah, what, it's a set, what, what's it described as a set? Oh. It's what? The set of all products. What products? Yeah. X. X times what? Uh, the elements of H. Yeah, so X times little H, where H is an H. Okay, good. So, so that's what this set is, right? You take this, this subgroup H and you just sort of left multiply everything by X and you get a new subset. Okay? Uh, now what we'll see in an, in a subsequent video, but it, maybe it's already obvious to you is that this is, like, it's of the same size as H, right? Because you, when you left multiply by something, it doesn't change the size because of left cancellation. Uh, so, that's that's something we'll, we'll talk about more detail later, okay? Uh, but so a left cos is just just any set of the form x h, where x is an element where h varies over h, and x is just some element of g, okay? Uh, but there's there, there's in fact many equivalent ways of describing a left cos. So one way is it's, you can just write one way is just it can be written in the form x h. The other another equivalent definition says that it's actually of the form x h whatever element in the subset you pick. So, maybe your picture will help. There's your group G. Here's the subgroup H, which contains the identity element somewhere. Okay. And now, I find some left coset of the form XH. Now what I'm saying is, if I picked another element here, which may be a different x, so I'll, maybe I'll call it x prime, then x prime h is also the same as x h. Okay? So, if I pick any element in the left coset, and I multiply that by h, I would get the same left coset. That's not obvious, right? I mean, maybe you're wondering, could I have, could I get something like that? Or something, but that doesn't happen, and actually, that again is something we'll prove a little later when we prove something important about left cosets. Okay, we'll prove that they actually don't have this intersection type of behavior. So, left coset of any element in the left coset is the same left coset. Okay, uh, there's a third thing I've written here which says that that if you start with anything in the left, if you pick an element x in the left coset, right, so you pick your element x here, and now you send any y to x inverse y. Then you'll get back in h. Right? Because what was y? y was of the form x h. Where h was in h. Right? Mm -hmm. So when you do x inverse y, what are you doing? x inverse x h, which just gives you mm -hmm. h, which is an h. Right? So if I start with anything in the coset and I sort of translate back by x inverse, I'll get to the subgroup. And in fact, if I take this whole coset, and I move every, I mean, I multiply everything by x inverse, I'll get back exactly the original subgroup, right? So these are some equivalent ways of defining left coset, but to really understand it, we have to watch the subsequent videos. Now, I just want to do a few quick examples, uh, because you may have some intuition for these already. So, let's look at a group as a subgroup of itself. Okay, so here's my, so let's say group G, and H equals G. So what are the left cosets of G in G? Here's G and here's H. It's the same group. What are the left cosets of H of G in itself? Well, yeah. Well, there's the left coset of the identity element. Oh yeah, I should have said this earlier. For any group and any subgroup, the subgroup itself is a left coset. Let me write it down here before we go on to our example. So H itself is a left coset of H 
and what's the coset representative the identity element right because I mean that's just one possible coset representative you could pick any element of H as a coset representative so any subgroup of a group is itself a coset of itself right because it's identity times H right so H equals EH but but in general there could be other subgroups I mean other cosets sorry in general there could be other cosets right because if you multiply something outside the subgroup by the subgroup you'll get something outside right okay but now let's look at the case where H equals G in that case what are the left cosets of G in itself G only one left coset, right? Okay. So, By the way, the reason we said left coset is because the element is being multiplied on the left. Some people maybe would like to call it right because the subgroup is being multiplied on the right, but like you have to fix some convention. But there's there's going to be some other thing called right coset where the subgroup is on the left and the elements on the right. Okay. Uh yeah, let's do another. What's another extreme example of a subgroup? Well, one extreme is the subgroup is everything. What's the other extreme for a subgroup? Empty set. No, empty set is in the subgroup. Oh, okay. Well, what's the smallest thing you can make a subgroup? Only that. Only that. That's a trivial subgroup, right? Mm -hmm. So, what are the cosets of the trivial subgroup? So, trivial subgroup just means it's a one point set with the identity. What are the cosets? What are the things of some x times the identity? What does that look like? What is x times the identity? X. So the cosets actually look like what? They're all. Each coset is how? What is the size of each coset? Hmm? One. One. In fact, every ele every single element subset is a coset, right? Are just the singleton subsets. So the picture would be something like you have your G, your H is just the identity, and then each point, each element, if you just view it as a single element set, that is a left coset of the identity in G. Okay. And how many left cosets are there in total? The size of the board. Yeah, but there's a more fancy word for size. What's the fancy word for size? There's a fancy word? Yeah. Oh, order. Order, yeah. Okay, good. Um, okay, let's do a couple of other examples. Just just see some something, the actual groups which you're maybe comfortable with. So let's think of of G as the rationals and H as the integers. Okay, and this is under addition, under plus. So is it a, is are the integers a subgroup of the rationals under addition? Yeah. Okay, good. So so we can talk of left courses. But now since since everything is additive, I'll use additive notation. So I'll use plus in, so instead of X H, I'll write X plus H. Right? Use add to notation. So what do the cosets of what so and, and and now since it's abelian, you don't actually have to say left because there's no real distinction between left and right. Okay. So what are the cosets of Z and Q? Let me ask you something more specific. What is the coset of half? Like coset with representative half. So if I so for like for any element, I can take the coset of that element, right? Just that element times the subgroup. So what's the coset for half? For half? 
for the number half. No, you want to do half plus z. What's half plus z? What, what elements of the rationals are those? So your number line. Here's half. What's the coset of half? For the subgroup z in q under addition. So what are the things which you can write in the form half plus c? Half plus integers. Hmm? Half plus integers? Hmm? Is there a name for it? Not name, but just tell me some more so I know you know what, what we're talking about. What's the subset? Maximum half. Maximum what? three. Half. There's step on this side. Three. Three halves. Five halves. So the coset is is exactly this thing, right? This subset. Hmm? This is the coset of half. What's the coset of uh, of one third? What are some elements of the coset of one third? Hmm? Uh, the negative two thirds. Yeah. Negative five thirds, six four thirds, seven thirds. You get the idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the coset of th of three over two? What's three over two plus c? Is it the same as something I already wrote down? Yeah. What's it the same as? One half. Let's So these are actually equal. And that's actually what I was saying. I was saying that if you take an element and take the left coset of that, and then you pick some other element in the left coset, and take the left coset of that new element, you'll get the same left coset. Right? So I took half, I took the left coset, and then I picked some other element, 3 over 2. And then took the left coset of that, that was the same as the original left coset. Right? So any, if you take a left coset and pick an element in there, and take the left coset of that again, you just get the same left coset. Okay? Uh, we'll see the actual proof for that, but we just looked at this example, which is easy. Uh, okay, now, now one more question with this example. Mm. What, now I want to say this, I want to say that if I just look at this subset of, of Q, or, or rather the, the intersection of this with the rational. So I look at all rationals which are between 0 and 1, including 0 and excluding 1. Mm -hmm. I want to say that this contains representatives for all the cosets. What do I mean by that? What I'm saying is every coset of Z and Q has some element in this set. What do I mean by that? What does a what does a coset of Z and Q in general look like? It's like a rational number. No, a coset of Z. It looks like a set of this type, right? Mm -hmm. So what what what's that set? It's just like you're taking things spaced by integers, right? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that any such coset, any such set, contains an element between zero and one. Do you see that? So suppose I took the coset of pi. Will this coset contain an element between 0 and 1? What will that element be? Yeah, or pi minus 3, right? It's in there. Uh, similarly, if I take some other number like e, look at e plus c, then you know that e minus 2 is in 0. e here is the E of real numbers, 2.7 something. Okay, so the point, do you see now that for whatever coset you take, whatever element you start with, you can do add, add some integer to it and bring it between 0 and 1, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is every coset has a representative in this set, right? Okay. And, and the representative is unique. Mm -hmm. You see that? There cannot be two elements between 0 and 1 which are in the same coset. Mm -hmm. And that's why I picked it close 0 and open 1. Okay. okay. So this forms a complete system of the coset representatives for for the integers in the rationals. Okay. Let's take one more example, which which uh, this is actually only for people who've seen vector spaces. 
Okay. So, oh, there's there's actually two x. Let me do another one first, which is easier. So let's take g as z and h as n z, where n is some greater than one uh, and is a natural number. So it's it. Okay. So what do the cosets of h in g look like? Let's, let's take a numerical value of uh, h, so, of n. So let's take n equals 3. So let's, for concreteness, let's just take h as 3c. Okay, so this is general, but I just want to take one item. So what are the cosets of 3z and z? Again, it's a billion. By 3z, I just mean here all multiples of 3. So h is like minus 3, 0, 3, 6. So you understand what the subgroup is? Now what are the cosets? Well, one coset of h is just 3z itself, right? The subgroup itself is a coset. So cosets, one of them is 3z itself. Is there any, what is the coset of 1? Yeah, of 1. What is 1 plus 3z? What is it? What do the elements look like? Just name a few. Uh, hmm? Hmm? 10. And on the other side? Okay. What's another way of saying something is in 1 plus 3z? It's of the form 1 plus 3n, right? Or uh, these are things which leave a remainder of 1 when dividing by 3. Yeah, are there any other cosets? Two plus three z. What? What are some stuff in there? Five. Well, two is there already. Remember uh -huh. to write two, right? Two, five. Eight. Eleven. On the side. Negative four. four. Okay. okay. Are there any more cosets? No. No. Why? Yes, they will repeat. Well, so the way you think about any coset, you can take the, you can divide by 3, take the remainder, right? And that's either 0, 1, or 2, right? And depending on whether it's 0, 1, or 2, that tells you which coset is. So this actually has only three cosets. Okay? So, uh, if instead of 3z, I had taken nz, the, it would be pretty similar, right? You'd get n different cosets. So in general, you'd get n cosets corresponding to the remainders when you divide by it, right? Okay. okay, let me do one more. This is, if you are, if you've seen a bit of vector spaces, this makes a lot of sense. Okay, so G is a two G is just a two dimensional vector space over R. Okay? So as a we're just considering the additive structure. So this is just under addition, right? You add coordinate wise. So how do you add two vectors? X1, Y1 plus X2, Y2 is what? X1 plus X2, comma, Y1 plus Y2. Okay, similarly you invert you again invert coordinate wise, you do the okay. Now let's say H is a, is a one-dimensional uh, subspace, okay? So, what, what are some examples of one-dimensional subspaces? Well, uh, you could take, uh, well, here's the R2, right? You could take any line through the origin, right? So, if you, you could take this line, what, what would the x-axis be? It will be what subset? It's a set of all points x comma zero. X is varies over r, right? That's one possibility for h. For h one, h two. What's another possibility? The vertical line. What's that? Zero y. Hmm? Y is zero. Okay. And give me some some other one. Slanting one. 
towards another subgroup. That's the y equals x line, right? Now these are subgroups under the under this operation. They're actually vector subspaces. But even if you haven't seen vector space theory, uh, this should sort of make sense. But if you've seen vector space theory now, something should click. Well, now what are the cosets of let's say what are the cosets of h1? H1 is the x-axis. What are its cosets geometrically? Yeah, so let's say what is the coset for the point 3, comma 5 for H1. Again, this is a billion, so we don't divide what left and right. Okay. So, so it's all things of the form 3, comma 5 plus H1, right? What does that mean? Things of the form 3, comma 5 plus X, comma 0. What's that? Plus x, 5. But x varies over all real numbers, right? Mm -hmm. So what does 3 plus x vary over? All real numbers. So you don't, it doesn't really matter if 3 plus it just This is just like varies over all of r. So what line is this? Y equals to 5. Y equals to 5. In general, what will, a cos what will the cosets look like? Lines parallel to the original subgroup. So in this case, original subgroup is x-axis, so they're all lines parallel to the x-axis. Okay. What will the cosets of H two look like? And what will the cosets of H three look like? Also parallel. They'll all be parallel to y equals x. Right? They'll, so there will be the lines with slope 1. Okay. Now, I don't know in, in like if you've seen linear algebra a bit, you may have seen that there is a definition of linear subspace which includes that it's it's actually contains the origin because it includes the stores and the addition. But there's another thing called affine subspace which basically means something which you take a linear subspace and you translate it. So, so like the lines through the origin are linear subspaces and these other lines parallel to them are affine subspaces. Have you heard of affine subspaces? No. No. Okay. Well, so that, that's what they are. They're cosets of, of this thing. So, now in all the examples we've seen, we've seen something curious, right? We saw in uh, this example, in this example, and in this example, all three examples, we saw that, first of all, we saw that the coset of any two elements, in like any two elements in the same coset, like or rather any element in a coset, the coset of that element is the same coset, right? So the cosets actually, they actually form a partition of your big group, okay. right? That's what happened here, right? Or like all the cosets of this subgroup are just parallel lines, together they cover the entire plane. I didn't draw all the parallel lines, but if I drew all the lines parallel to a given line, they would all cover the whole plane, right? The same way, here, for Z and Q, the cosets of all the things in here would cover all the rational numbers, right? Every rational number you could write as a coset of something in here. And similarly, in this case, Z and 3Z, the coset, the three cosets of 3Z together cover all the integers. So these are actually the two properties that we will prove a uh, little later. Uh, first, that, they, that the cosets actually or right, this is the main thing we want to do. The course is actually partition the group. We'll also prove that they all have the same size. And that actually will give us a very strong control over what groups can look like.